practice, practice. Well, what you're doing is you're doing in, in camera transition, okay? So, like we'll be sitting here and I'm gonna go bleh. And then that transition, I can get it to pop out. Hey guys, what's up? Second day at Barber. Steven is like me on camera, which is weird because he's really a celebrity. He's a celebrity we all wish we needed when we needed him, before we knew we needed him. So anyway, the uh, back at Barber, you know, this time I have a quick shifter, that's great. You know, the fuel problem's not a problem, all that good stuff, right? Not going that much faster, to be honest. Not going that much faster. On my dash, you know, like the, that's probably the thing relative, because last time we didn't have the transponders. But the dash says I'm going, you know, about a second and a half or a full second, I can't remember. It was 40.8, I think it was 40.8 was what I did in May. And then I've done a 38.5 on the dash. So yeah, a couple seconds, right? All right, fine. And the thing with this track is because there's so much stuff you're doing all the time. There's no break. It's just accelerate, turn, or accelerate, brake, turn, accelerate, brake, turn, everywhere you go, right? And then it's up, down, and around, which means that you're, you can't even really rest on some of the little straights. Like on the map, if you look at the straight between four and five, right? That's not a resting area. I mean, you just came over a hill and you're trying to get the bike to settle, so you're all crossed up on the bike trying to keep, the, <laughs> trying to stay on track, basically. And then you're accelerating down the Charlotte's Web, which is downhill, so it's like a, a whole nother type of braking other than just flat braking. So it's just, a, there's a lot of things like that that's uh, that's been hard to kind of get used to on a 1000. So I haven't actually broke my 600 time yet. I'm close, close. Coming out of like uh, Charlotte's Web, for instance, coming up over that hill. So you come out of Charlotte's Web, it's a left hander. You swing out and you're, the bike's cranked over maybe 20 degrees, something like that. And as you're accelerating, you're in, I'm in second gear. I, I'm not going to the stop. I'm, I'm almost, I'm probably like 60, 70% throttle, right? I'm watching the revs go up and I'm trying to like match the point where you're going to crest this little hill while keeping the bike cranked over to kind of like reduce the wheelie. And I'm just, I'm not trusting the electronics with the wheelie control that is. And I've got almost the max uh, wheelie control on. So what I need to do really is go out on that and just open the gas and bike crank over, maybe not go all the way up into second gear, maybe short shift a little bit, but be, but be full gas, right? And just short shift and let the bike do a wheelie. Just let it happen. But anyway, Pan American Superbike. Round five, we're gonna do a Grand Corsa. 12 laps around here. Oh, buddy, that was a, that was a struggle yesterday doing four. <laughs> it was bad. So doing 12 is like, ha, it's, it's gonna be violent. intro i had a lot of fun putting that together guys i found that song and it was perfect let's get into this race lap one barber motorsports park pan america superbike bmw 1000 it's my first race at barber motorsports park on a bmw 1000 <laughs> and i'm not doing so well guys i'm not i'm not doing so hot i got a better launch though last time you'll notice that was uh that wasn't that bad but here we go we're gonna chase these uh these other leader bikes around the track and see if i can actually go a little bit quicker than on my 600. 
Coming into the turn 15, roll up to 16, we're chasing Mikey Hammond, he's on a Gen 4 ZX-10. See right there guys, you don't need the new new, the new hotness to actually get out there and race. Take your whatever old 10 year old leader bike, you know, it makes about 180 horsepower, you're good man, don't worry about it. Come on, front straight away, full stick, and we're going to break early. We're going to break early into turn one. Garbage, a 42 from a standing start. Ugh. But anyway, coming into my favorite section of this whole track, it's going to be turn two and three and four. It's going in this big bowl. If you guys ever get to see this track in person, it is a bowl. Like, that's what it looks like. You come up over this hill, and you're trying to, like, screech on a little bit more throttle, but you can't because you're going to run off the track if you go any faster. But, of course, I'm going to get in really tight here next to Mikey. Whoa. Whoa, buddy. Let me tell you what. That was, um, that was fun. That was nerve-wracking. That was. Never, never do that. Ugh. All right, but anyway, get up into fourth gear before we drop down in the museum. Um, we got to get up there to then drop down in the museum. You jump over this little uh, this little curbing right here. I've actually gone over that curb and actually had the rear wheel pop up off the ground. It's uh, it's wild, man. But we're on the stick really hard because we're going to hit this flip-flop. This is my second most favorite part of this whole track on this 1000. But the problem is it's just so much muscle to have to peel that bike all the way over and roll on the gas and 20 feet off the apex. It's ridiculous. All right, they're not leaving me. But I'm not exactly chasing them. I'm just sort of following, and that's not that's not good. You know, I gotta I gotta we gotta go faster than this, guys. Come on, get close to the rumbles. That wasn't bad. It wasn't bad at all. But now we're just kind of part throttle. We're just coasting. Never coast, right? Well, that was coasting. If you want to know what it looks like. All right, turn 17. This one isn't bad for me actually. Just get close to the rumbles and just roll on the gas real hard, real hard. There you go, all the way out to the rumbles again up into fourth gear and you're going to want to break after the start finish up into about the three board but i was breaking early for some reason we're gonna catch up to mikey here because i think i can get him down to charlotte's web i really think that that's that's my game and that's my game plan and we're going to try to actually execute it but we're going to have to hold our thought that for a second get onto the outside start rolling on the throttle be brave be brave come on little aaron let's go let's go come on next to him oh yes yes <laughs> Yeah, you like that noise too, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, it's like a video game. Anyway, um, hey, you know, take the wins where you can, right? Let's roll on the gas, let's go, because right here he actually gets off there, off the Charlotte's Web much better than I do. Uh, trust the bike, trust the tires, whatever he's doing, he's doing better than I am, because you can see I didn't actually leave him there. But now coming through museum and going through the flip-flop for turn seven, eight, I think, or whatever it is, eight, nine, I don't know. Uh, I can pull a little gap. You can see I've opened it up right here. And then we're going to freaking roll this over. But that bike, man, that leader bike, oh, it's so heavy. Uh, 600, you can go through there full stick. I mean, like, just crack off, you get right back on after you initiate the first turn, and boom, right back over again. And then the bike just wasn't, it wasn't turning very well for me the whole time I was here. I think the nose was a little bit too high, even though I, I think I made a change uh, to actually drop the nose, help the nose, like a uh, spring change or something, right here. So this whole section, this whole right-hand section, I'm leaning on the bar with my right hand, my throttle hand. I can't do that and maintain your endurance or maintain your line because you're gonna actually lock the steering head in position. That's your line, you're done. So coming across the start finish line again, we actually ran a 38.5 that time, so it's not bad. Still about two tenths of a second off of my PB around here, which is a 38.2 on a 600. So all that extra horsepower is not doing anything. Even though I've got the traction control turned off like a man, like a, a red-headed, hairy-chested, American, red-blooded, you know, how many more times can we say red? Anyway, all right, time to Charlotte's Web. Let's go. They're getting a little closer, but, you know, it might just be the corner sneak, you know, playing games with me right there because we get all bunched up. Yeah, see, these guys are leaving a lot better. Look at them go, man. <sighs> and it was boring because, frankly, I couldn't catch them. Here we are back, and we're looking at about a uh, five-second gap. It is, no, it's almost eight seconds. That's because we've slowed down. We're back in the 42s. And here comes Mikey. Yep, coming up over turn four. He gets it. Gets it real good because at this point, ladies and gentlemen, I am exhausted, and I don't think I can make it. In fact, I pit it in. I DNF'd. I've never done that before. First time. Crying about something. I don't know what my problem was. I can't feel my hand. Oh, Do ah. better next time. Oh, you guys. <laughs> so, what had happened was 
It's a good race. All right. So first of all, let's start. Let's start with the launch because that's always a problem for me, right? Launch actually went pretty well. Brought the revs up, and instead of half throttling it like the manual says to do, I just full gassed it right to the stop, and then just let the clutch out like normal. Bike left with everybody else, no problem. Started to have a little bit of up, and I didn't trust the electronics, and I cut the clutch in or something like that. I, I don't quite remember exactly. I'll look at the footage and find out what I did. And then people started come by me at that point. So anyway, it's better. Second flying lap, beat my qualifying time by quite a ways. I ran a 30, let's see, my qualifying time was a 39.2, and I, I ran a 38.4, okay? So anyway, yeah, um, lap three or four, my arms started pumping up really bad because I'm gripping the bar. I think I'm just like, I'm just going like that. I gotta let go of the bar. So I didn't finish the race. I came in on lap seven. Really disappointed about that, but I wasn't gonna stay out there and just run laps for the sake of running lap. <sighs> yeah. Which goes to a lot of other things about this whole like thing I'm trying to do with Moto America. We'll have a talk about that later.